<laughs> so um, today I'm going to be uh, talking about something completely different, um, to me anyway. I'm going to be talking about libel laws, especially English libel laws and why I think they need to be reformed. It's not something I particularly know about. I'm not a legal expert and I haven't been sued yet. Um, so I'm a scientist. This is what most people think scientists look like. And um, so normally you wouldn't, you'd be forgiven for thinking that science and libel laws don't really go together. And I'd agree with you that they shouldn't, but unfortunately uh, they sometimes do. And um, this is becoming an increasing problem. This is what scientists really look like. So, um, <laughs> um, so uh, what I'm interested in doing normally as a scientist is trying to make discoveries to understand the natural world. But a little known fact about scientists is that we are actually human and um, so we make mistakes. So how can scientific progress advance? How can we actually make discoveries in the end as soon as we make mistakes? Well it's because we have an open, uh, a culture of open criticism. So new data come along and we revise our opinions and Carl Sagan said it best when he said um, at the heart of science there's an essential balance between two seemingly contradictory attitudes. An openness to new ideas, no matter how bizarre or counterintuitive, and most ruthlessly sceptical scrutiny of all ideas. And um, I suppose Simon Singh, who you see here, in this, very much in this vein, um, wrote a book um, discussing alternative medicine and the evidence for the uh, different kinds of alternative medicine like homeopathy and chiropractic and where there's evidence or not. And, and he also wrote an article in the Guardian newspaper where he criticized some chiropractors in this kind of South Park-esque way um, for um, promoting chiropractic as a treatment for some childhood illnesses like asthma and colic when there's absolutely no evidence to support this. Unfortunately, the British Chiropractic Association's attitude was to sue him. I agree with these comments attributed to Ben Goldacre here. That's pretty much my attitude. Um, and um, so this is very unfortunate because they were actually given the right to reply by the Guardian newspaper. And so now the situation is in the hands of the courts. And so I think you'll agree that if you decide to sue for libel in a situation like this, you're trying to end the debate, not continue the debate. And they're just trying to shut him up, basically. And it's not a way that we're going to find out the truth of what is an appropriate medical intervention. Thankfully, Simon Singh is fighting this in the courts, and he's become kind of a rallying point um, for libel reform generally. He's got a very hard task ahead of him because the English libel laws are quite favorable to the plaintiff, so whoever it is claims they're um, being injured. So he has to basically prove his innocence rather than have somebody else prove his guilt, and that's uh, obviously quite difficult. He also does not have the opportunity to use the obvious public interest in understanding what is a useful or um, effective medical intervention um, as a defence. So the fact that there's a public interest in this doesn't come into it at all in English libel law. Also, he's likely to use, lose loads of money. Um, in England, the defending a libel co case costs 140 times more than the rest of Europe. And even if he wins, he's going to lose £100,000. And that's personal money. He, they didn't sue the newspaper. They sued him personally. Um, this is Peter Wilmshurst, who's a cardiologist. He, um, he's also being sued for libel by, by a company that makes heart uh, surgery devices because after a clinical trial of these devices for a particular ailment um, there was shown that it wasn't helping and he commented that perhaps the surgical device doesn't work and now he's being sued for libel and if this goes through the courts he's probably going to go bankrupt and will still be none the wiser about what um, medical interventions work so this isn't the way to go and um, the the libel laws in England are so bad that they're attracting libel tourists. This book was written by an American, it was published in New York, and a Saudi businessman sued her in England because this is where he had the best chance of success. So I think this is pretty scandalous. Um, what we see as well is an effect called libel chill. So journalists and newspapers are self-censoring effectively because they're afraid of being sued for libel, which means that people like you who have a genuine interest in understanding, um, in understanding science generally and deciding what medical treatments you might use, um, you don't have that information. So there's a great need for libel reform. They need to reduce the cost so it's not a money-making exercise. They need to shift the burden of proof. Um, they also need to allow for a public interest defence. And there's a great um, campaign, there's a great swell of support coming up, kind of crystallising around Simon Singh specifically. He's become the main guy, but there's a lot of support in this libel reform campaign. We've got our own Darrow O'Brien, we got uh, Stephen Fry, Jonathan Ross, and a lot of very high profile support. And if you would like to support this too, you can. They're looking for people to sign their petition on libelreform.org. You don't have to be in the UK, anybody can sign it. And there's even Wi Fi in this room, so go ahead and do it now. Thanks.